I pray that these words and the thoughts of all our hearts are acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Please have a seat. When we were at church last week, the three wise men, I'll come back here in a minute, the three wise men were down at the point. Uh, so we see them here, kneeling and bowing in homage to the Christ child. And that's what we are celebrating in church today. And for those lucky enough for us to have celebrated Christmas, just like here in church, we've had the tree, the tinsel, and the baubles, and the lights, and soon they will be consigned to a cupboard or the loft, no doubt, here at St. James. However, today, or it might have been yesterday, but the Feast of the Epiphany, it's the brightest of lights, could not be contained by any structure. It illuminated the birthplace of Jesus, the Holy Child. And we are celebrating today the revelation of Jesus to the Magi, who were the representatives of the whole world. The Magi were Gentiles, wise, spiritual men, who were seeking God in the world. They understood astronomy, astrology, and were able to interpret dreams. They traveled over a thousand miles or so from modern day Iran to Bethlehem. On meeting Jesus, they were awestruck, astonished, overwhelmed with joy on meeting Jesus and the Holy Family. A theologian tries to sum up this up by these words. He says, imagine if we could live each day as a day full of promises. Imagine that we could walk through the new year always listening to a voice saying to us, I have a gift for you and can't wait for you to see it. Just imagine that. The gift of having the Holy Child in our lives. And like us, the Magi knelt in homage to Christ. They offered gifts, the kingly gift of gold, the priestly gift of frankincense, and myrrh, the precious ointment used for embalming the dead, indicative of the sacrifice Jesus would make on the cross. And other qualities the Magi possessed, but that they were wise enough to recognize Herod's deceit. They disobeyed Herod's wishes to return to him with Jesus' whereabouts. Herod's reputation of being a tyrant and murderer would have been well known even to visitors. Anyone who posed any kind of threat to Herod's authority was removed. The gospel tells us that Herod was frightened. He was under threat. He knew there could only be one king. And in Herod's world, there would only be one outcome. And sadly, in the world today, such mentality remains. In nations, cities, 
towns and homes, oppression, control, threats and violence. The Magi showed a commitment to meet Jesus. They lost their way a bit going to Jerusalem instead of Bethlehem. But they get back on track and arrive in Bethlehem. They were resolute in their desire to have Jesus in their lives. They were warm hearted. They were humble. They went to Bethlehem as Gentiles and they left as believers. They wanted to know the one true king and live their lives in accordance with his will. They were the first to spread the good news. And it's always important to recognize the role Gentiles had in God's plans. And the other readings for today are important for us to note the surfeit of messages of God's love throughout the Bible. The Old Testament reading for today reminds us of Isaiah's prophecy. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. In Psalm 72, again from today's readings, believed to be written by King David and his son Solomon, speaks about kings paying homage and offering gifts. Give the king your justice, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. He shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall preserve the lives of the needy and dear shall their blood be in his sight. The epistle reading from Paul, the Paul, the chosen one to pioneer the work of spreading the gospel in his letter to the Ephesians, he says, as we heard, the secret is out. Gentiles are to share Israel's inheritance. All the promises made to Abraham and Sarah's whole family have been widened to include all of us, all, everyone in the world. And Paul expresses the boundless riches of Christ that are available to all who believe in him. Our faith gives us access to God's riches. And as we begin the year 2024, it gives us an opportunity to look at what changes within our capabilities we might make in going ahead. And from the readings today, we would hope to be astonished when we encounter our loving God, both in worship and in private. We should be astonished about our loving God. And also to be as committed as the Magi to fulfilling God's world for the whole world. The Magi didn't always, you know, they didn't go the right path, they were a bit askew, but they got back on track. And we will too. And we have the knowledge knowing that we're not on our own. We have the advocate, the Holy Spirit with us who will, if we listen, and sometimes if we just recognize the cues. I remember Robin Paisley once talked about 
um, the guy that was uh, had fallen overboard or something, and um, you know, uh, the, the the tale was that you know some dead throwing him a uh, a boat come up and they, another boat come alongside and he wouldn't go on it. So no, I, I can't go on that or. And you know they, they threw him a life belt, and oh no, it doesn't fit me or something. You know, so this was all God's cues. So we have to be a bit uh, wise, discerning, um, and I think we have to be discerning as well to sort out the wheat from the chaff, to be able to identify the Herods and the Herodias, the female versions of Herods, who we meet in various forums, whether it be physically or indeed on, online, that people that maybe try to divert us from the path. We have to be discerning to God's will. And lastly, for now, recognizing the message of the epiphany that God's love, justice, hope, and mercy are for the whole world. Let our faith in this year of 2024, our faith in God, ensure we do all we can to play our part in God's plan. And as using Paul's word, we do so with boldness and confidence.